Grayson appeared before a judge. He was also ordered to stay in custody in a local county jail. Today's hearing was to decide whether or not Grayson will stay behind bars. Cameras were not allowed inside the courtroom, but the courtroom was crowded with her Sonia Massey's family and friends. When the judge announced his decision that Grayson would stay behind bars, people began to cheer and the judge quickly told them to be quiet. Friends of Sonia Massey were in the courtroom today. They even at times got very emotional. On July 6, Sonia Massey dialed 911 to report an intruder at her home in Sangamon County, Illinois. When Sean Grayson and another officer checked things out and found no intruder, they knocked on her door. Things quickly took a tragic turn when Miss Massey went to turn off her stove and within moments, Grayson pulled out his gun and shot her in the head. The outrage followed George Floyd's incident in 2020, sparked a huge push for police reform. Yet, despite this outcry, the Massey case is a grim reminder of how little has changed. While there have been some local and state level reforms, the big ticket federal reforms, like the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, got stuck in Senate gridlock. Even if it had passed, many experts believe it wouldn't have done enough to curb police incidents. One of the few silver linings since 2020 is that we're starting to see more accountability for officers involved in unjustified shootings. Between 2016 and 2019, only 43 cops faced charges for first degree related to on-duty shootings. But from 2020 to 2023, that number jumped to over 70. Still, more than 1,100 people were shot and slayed by police last year alone, marking a record high. Grayson has been fired and charged with first degree, but that's just a drop in the ocean when it comes to tackling the broader issue of police reform. Often, police are put in positions where they're asked to handle situations they're not trained for or suited to, and that's a big part of the problem. Civilian intervention. Police are juggling an insane number of tasks these days, from checking your headlights to clearing out homeless camps and enforcing youth curfews. This means tens of millions of Americans have at least one run-in with the police each year. If we want to see better policing and fewer cases of problems, we've got to seriously invest in alternative programs that take some of this workload off cops. Around 20% of police incidents involve someone in mental distress. To address this, cities like Albuquerque, Durham and Denver have rolled out alternative response programs. Instead of sending armed officers, they're sending unarmed civilians to handle calls related to homelessness, addiction, and mental health crises. Initially, there were worries that unarmed responders might get hurt, especially when dealing with people in a mental health crisis. But over the past few years, none of these crisis teams have reported major injuries on the job, and people are getting the specialized help they need. These alternative programs are a hit politically, Many cops didn't sign up to be the bathroom police at Starbucks, and police chiefs are happy to see fewer calls piling up on their desks. While these programs are a positive step, they're still just a drop in the bucket. They're growing in number and scope, maybe the biggest takeaway from the George Floyd protests, but they're only handling a small fraction of the calls and aren't always available 24-7. You see, some people don't like the truth, because the truth ain't always pretty. Nah, sometimes the truth is ugly. See, I got into law enforcement because my mother was unalived at the hands of a coward in a situation. But I got out of law enforcement because of politics. And that was the case of Sonia Massey. If you don't know who Sonia Massey is, I asked that you go look. And all it did was make me realize that it doesn't matter how much you educate a person. If they have an ugly heart, it will always bleed through. You see, she was unalived at the hands of Deputy Grayson. When she called them and said, hey, th I think there's an intruder. Miss Massey says, can I go tend to that hot water on the stove? Of course you can, they said. At some point, she told Deputy Grayson, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You see, he pulled his gun and said, I will shoot you in the face. And that's exactly what he did. And when she said that, the devil truly came out of Mr. Grayson. He shot Sonia Massey in the face over hot water. They had every opportunity to de-escalate that situation. Now, a young lady's life is over because a deputy was too scared. It could cause some damage, but it's not deadly force. Now, a young lady has lost her life because somebody don't know how to act right. Right way, each and every day, it sets them back. It makes their job harder. Sonia Massey deserved to be here, and Officer Grayson deserved. He ain't an officer no more. His punk is in jail. But all it does is it sets back law enforcement and it makes their job harder. Mix of strategy. Community violence intervention programs use a mix of strategies to tackle these problems. They reach out to high-risk folks to offer help, work on preventing retaliation, and use mediation and therapy to head off violence before it starts. This isn't about cutting police budgets. 
It's about putting money into some of the most promising community-led solutions we've seen in a while. President Biden's administration has put hundreds of millions into these programs with support from both sides of the aisle, and it seems to be paying off. We're allegedly seeing one of the biggest drops in homicide rates ever, even though police staffing hasn't really changed much recently. But here's the kicker. House Republicans are pushing to cut federal funding for the DOJ's community intervention programs. That's a major misstep. The feds spend tens of billions on policing every year. They should be matching that with serious investments in community issues and alternative response programs. Cities all over the country are proving that there's more to community safety than just traditional policing. Until we rethink what police should be doing and let other approaches handle certain situations, we'll keep seeing officers adding violence to situations that don't need it. We have to file a motion for review and have a hearing thereon, which we did. We're here for Sian Massey. We're here every court date, every time we walk in this building, every time Sean Grayson is scheduled for court, you will see the Massey family. The judge then denied uh, Mr. Grayson's release. He stood on his first decision. And John Grayson has pleaded not guilty to murder, aggravated battery with a firearm, and official misconduct. This comes after he was denied a pretrial release earlier this month. Former Deputy Sean Grayson will be at this 9 a.m. pretrial hearing today, where the judge and attorneys will go over the facts of the case. A third call was made by Massey's mother, who told emergency dispatchers her daughter was suffering from a mental health breakdown and that she feared police. Now, records released by Illinois authorities show that two 911 calls were made from Sonia Massey's home in the days leading up to her death. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We rebuke this discriminatory criminal justice system in the name of Jesus. Last week, we appealed that to the 4th District Appellate Court. That's going to take probably three, four months to get a decision out of the appellate court on that. Tragedy could be prevented. After the shooting incident, Grayson dismissed Massey as crazy and decided she didn't deserve first aid. The released cam footage of the incident is chilling. It shows how yet another defenseless black woman was viewed as a threat by armed cops. Between 2019 and 2021, around 180 calls for help ended with law enforcement shooting and slaying the people who needed assistance. Most of these folks had a history of mental health issues or were in the middle of a crisis and their families were trying to get help. Emergency physicians are trained to handle high risk and potentially violent situations every day. Emergency room staff often face verbal and physical assaults, sometimes triggered by mental health crises, substance use, or sudden outbursts from otherwise stable people. When dealing with an agitated patient, they try to calm things down by speaking softly, slowly, and reassuringly. They avoid loud voices, crowding the patient, or using harsh language, unlike how Grayson behaved. They even remove security if we can to make the patient feel less threatened. If talking things down doesn't work and the patient remains agitated, then they use medications and restraints as a last resort. Oral meds are preferred over injections when possible because they're less traumatic. No matter what's happening, they aim to control and de-escalate the situation calmly, using verbal methods first and only turning to restraints and meds when absolutely necessary. Massey's family warned 911. Massey's family has confirmed she had paranoid schizophrenia, which can make people feel like they're being watched or followed and can mess with their focus and organization. In the body cam footage that's being released, you can see Massey was clearly distressed, unsettled, and scared. She needed calm and reassurance. Emergency physicians see the signs and suspect a mental health issue that needs more attention. Given Massey's medical history and her belief that there was an intruder, her fear in front of the officers makes sense. Even without her mental health issues, being alone with armed cops after thinking there was an intruder would be intimidating for anyone. Her behavior in the footage didn't seem any harder to manage than that of other distressed patients seen in the ER. Handling distressed individuals can be tricky and requires special skills. When mistakes happen, doctors are ethically obligated to be honest. Massey's family was initially misled about her demise. Her father was told she was stabbed by an intruder and another person on the scene claimed it was self-inflicted. These falsehoods, along with Grayson's dismissive label of Massey as crazy, distorted her mental health issues and downplayed Grayson's actions. As physicians and black women, 
It's deeply troubling to see how law enforcement can twist or hide the truth. Another crucial point is how quickly Massey's encounter with the police escalated to fatal force. We recognize this pet-to-threat phenomenon. Coined by Dr. Keisha Thomas, it describes how black women in the workplace and academia are first seen as projects needing support, but once they show ambition or authority, they can quickly be viewed as threats. This dynamic was starkly evident in Massey's case. Despite being vulnerable, retreating to her kitchen floor with her hands up and apologizing, she was swiftly seen as a threat rather than someone in need of help. The Aftermath Massey's heartbreaking story proves just how crucial it is for police to approach people in crisis with empathy and proper training. Only 15 to 17 percent of police agencies have crisis intervention training, which teaches officers how to handle mental health crises. CIT programs help break down stigma, reduce the use of force, and steer people toward mental health facilities rather than jail. But sadly, these programs aren't universally required. CIT training should be a must for every officer. Still, cops shouldn't be expected to replace trained mental health professionals. We need programs to bring in social workers and mental health pros to handle crises, which not only cuts down on hospital and safety costs, but also provides a safer, more supportive environment for people in distress. In a world that has too often let down black women, Massey's final words, OK, I'm sorry, are a painful reminder of how she felt burdened by a system that failed her. She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came out with blowing water. That's what all this is. I was standing right here. All right. Thank you. Me. Oh, uh, I didn't yeah. know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Fucking just crazy. Uh, he's got tape. I, I think I got a roll. The blood is on the hands of the system as well as Sean Grayson. That's what we got to do. That's the reality. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.